People leaving prison need to rebuild their lives. This is difficult work. It takes time. Like most changes, it's often two steps forward, one step back. It's hard not to give up and harder to find people who don't give up on you. How can faith communities help or hinder this transition? I would really like to go to church when I come out because a good church will make me stay out of prison. It will help me change as well. They will probably treat me the same as everyone else. They will treat me the same as everyone else. When he visited the church, I don't think the church was ready for him. Um, they were they were welcomed him, but I don't think he didn't feel supported. He didn't feel that they could connect with him um, as somebody um, coming out of prison. And so, even though they were quite welcoming and what have you, he, he just felt a little bit uncomfortable. And then the church didn't know. I don't think knew how to deal with him. So I'm, I'm getting this information from, from his family. Um, I don't think they had much involvement with, um, with, with um, prisoners or prisons. If resettlement is going to work, then the community needs to overcome its fears about ex-offenders. So if you allow fear to, to hold you like that, then you are just as much a prisoner as the young men in here. There are some currents in our society which would want to pretend that the criminal justice world isn't there, or it's, so they know it's there, but actually we don't want to know about it. We want to separate people off. Um, but actually we can't do that uh, because this is part of our society, it's part of our world. Um, people who find themselves in one way or another caught up in the criminal justice system, whether as offenders or families of offenders or victims of crime, actually that's affecting people's lives every day across our society in all our communities. And if we can do things to kind of change that, to change people, to unlock potential in people, to make it different, then that benefits us all. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illa Allah. As Salaamu Alaikum uh, brothers and sisters. Uh, just a brief introduction. Uh, it's Imam uh, Zishan uh, from the Fulton Young Offenders Prison. <clears throat> now my dear respected friends, why is it that when a Muslim brother comes out of prison or when anyone comes out of prison, why does it result in going straight back in a week or two later? Because when they come out, right, they have a community to face. Everyone would turn around and look and say, he's a criminal. We don't want to talk to him. So if the community is doing this, who does he have to turn back to? My dear respected friends, there will come a time on the day of judgment when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to us, there was a time when I was hungry and you didn't give me no food. There was a time when I was thirsty and you didn't give me no water. All we're asking for is to walk by a side with this prisoner or with his brother when he comes out the, when he comes out into your community. What happens is the service allows you to come into prison, be prison trained, be cleared for a prison service, and you come in to meet your Muslim brother. You build a relationship with this brother before he comes out of prison, and when he comes out of prison, you are in touch with him on the outside. Now, my dear respected friends. Please give us some of your time as you are walking out. As you are walking out of the masjid, inshallah, you can see at the table behind you, there are some forms and there are some descriptions of what a mentor is expected to do. So please take that with you. Put your name, numbers, email addresses, and inshallah, you will hear from us in the coming weeks. So I think the community at large are uh, deluded uh, that no Muslim ever goes to prison, no Muslim ever does anything wrong, but reality is quite different. Obviously we need to address this and having volunteers uh, from within our locality is, is one step forward. Uh, nobody likes to see the son or daughter behind bars. Interfaith groups, neighbouring mosques, um, neighbouring churches and others where we have quite a few of them in this locality, uh, we could engage with them and perhaps try and uh, deal with this common uh, problem collectively uh, to get the results we want. Yeah, my mentor's name is Shimodi. I've been with her for now for over a year I think. 
it's gonna help me find a job and them sort of things. How have you been keeping since the release? Uh, yeah, just, just spending time with my family and catching up. Okay. What, have you been do, what, have you, what have you been doing with your spare time? Doing probation every week, just try to find employment and them sort of things and stay out of trouble. <clears throat> I think I've learned about good mentoring. It would sound quite simple, but letting the mentee speak. Listening is actually a skill in itself. Generally, when we really listen, I think there's a natural instinct where you can pick up on things. And when you let the mentee speak, just naturally, a lot of things came out of them. So we've had a bit of a chat about, obviously, your job search. Yeah. We're going to meet up next week. What about getting linked with the Muslim community? There is always a potential that he may move away from Islam when he's out. And I think that would be far more reason for me to continue my mentoring relationship. And if it's a case of if someone moves away and we can no longer help them, maybe we need to double think why we're in the field. My a mentee and I have had a um, conversation about practice of Islam. He likes to ask lots about rules and things like that. And I've told him, get out there. Let's concentrate about getting you okay and we'll deal with the other stuff later as and when it arises. I hope, I pray for the best for him. Because he does deserve it, he's ready. He's ready to put in the efforts and I think that's a big thing. So how did you find that um, first service that you came on that Sunday? I was nervous when I first came. Yeah, yeah. I thought everyone was going to think, God, who is she, you know? We have a, a climate of acceptance. It's built into the culture of our church. You know, there is no shame and there mm. is no embarrassment. You're a brand new person in Christ. So that's what we're celebrating. You know, I think it's great. It is, it's it's it fantastic is. to have you in the church and have you feeling that, you know, hey, I I'm, I'm, feel like I'm integrating and yeah. I feel like I'm becoming a part of yeah. a spiritual family. Definitely. See, in the Quran, it doesn't say that one should be shunned. It does not. That is culture and tradition. And it's, over the years, it's built up like that. I've got so many plans and I'm bursting with all these ideas for when I get out because obviously <laughs> in this place what you're going to do is think. So that's what I have been doing, I've been doing a lot of thinking. The British Muslim Heritage Centre is a community organisation. At this moment in time we don't have anything specific for for Muslim prisoners coming out of prison, whether it's men or women, we look at what the need is. Then if, if this doesn't exist in the community, which I don't think it does, then we, we, we are more than happy to look at it. And if there's a big need for it, then the, the trustees will make a decision to make that happen. But as things stand, I think the way the centre is, I don't, prisoners or ex-prisoners, from what I know, is that they feel comfortable coming here. But because of this, particular situation is so low profile you're never going to know if there's a need for it until it's actually there Yasmin's seen so many girls coming in here ex-offenders now you've never known them about them if Yasmin didn't tell you about them yeah, exactly so. so so the first step is to work with you guys and yeah. network and then if you've got other people or has been got contacts so. no like it'd be huge i want to go out there i want to tell people this whole stereotype and the stigma that's around against jail and prison. If I can, to some extent, change the way people think, I'd love to do that. I think communities being quick to tarnish and label people, it is very, very difficult, but it's just something that we as community leaders need to, need to address. And the only way you can address it is by having imams come and talk about it openly, and then saying, you know, perhaps have some sort of workshops with people who think they have problems, they don't have to come up with the detail, mm -hmm. but at least we can open a door, half a door at least, for these people to walk into and say, look, I've got a problem, it needs addressing, what can you do for me? Mm -hmm. 
since the last time we all met with my client, it, things have been quite up and down. His rehabilitation hasn't been going so smoothly, but it's just kind of one of those things it's expected with this. So I persevered with him. My fears for the clients is that he just reoffends and he never gets back on track. I mean, I don't think I'll give up on him, um, and he knows that as well, but it's just really, it's worrying, I suppose, because he had relapsed. There's a possibility that he may have ended up back into the prison system, and which in that case, I go into the prison system as well and work with him from that angle. But you do have some people um, that don't, that's their life. It's really sad, no matter what's done, that's what their life ends up with. And I think I've seen him so, so much more. That's my absolute worst fear. If it was an ideal word and I could design my own program, one thing would be to really have the faith community at large involved and providing services specific to prison mentoring. The big goal would be just resettlement teams and mosques, resettlement team in every faith community. Yeah. Within the Hebrew scriptures there's this passionate desire for justice and that that's something which the community as a whole has a responsibility for in God's name and justice goes in all directions. It's justice for the offender as well as for the person offended against. It's justice for the whole of society. That's something that we're meant to be absolutely passionate about. And then we've also got this message about transformation and about restoration and about healing and renewal. And that's about putting things together which have become disjointed and broken and wounded. And that can apply to individuals and families and society. And all of that feeds into our engagement with these, these really important matters. If I hadn't been at the message, or I wasn't a member of the congregation now, had I not the support through the chaplaincy, I'd be a mess. Each day is a challenge in itself because I haven't got any restrictions or boundaries around me saying I can't do anything. It's down to free, free will, you know, and choice, and I'm choosing to make the right decisions, really. And I feel that every step of the way I've had to remind myself that I've got my faith, you know, um, and that's what's getting me through these days. The message has given me an opportunity, which I'm so grateful for. I absolutely love getting up in the morning and coming to work, and it was such a buzz. And everyone's happy, you know, and everyone is happy to see you happy. For me, the church isn't a religion, it's a way of life. I wish I'd come to Christ a lot earlier, but hey ho. <laughs> it wasn't ready for me back then. <laughs> it's ready for me now. <laughs> Bring it on! <laughs> It's gonna take some time to get things right I know that I can change my ways Heaven knows that it's gonna take some time to get things right I know that I can change my ways Change my ways I know that I can change my ways Heaven knows that it's gonna take some time to get things right I know that I can change my ways